I'm still at Clock Factory and I'm with Bush Baby. Hello. Hello, hello. How's it going? Very good, thank you. And yourself? Not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. Loving the curly mullet. Thank you. We're, we're bang on trend, aren't we? <laughs> oh, you got one as well. <laughs> I, I love do. That. <laughs> I do. Um, yeah, I want to start off with a little gift, if that's okay. okay. Got everyone a little gift tonight. So uh, here's one for you. Oh, sick. Yeah, uh, it's not one that I know. I think you might have said once that you like Chemical Brothers. But maybe you didn't. I just saw it and thought, he'll like this. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. No problem Thank at all. Um, I know my new Leng are some of your biggest inspirations. Mm -hmm. And you've since worked with them, played with them many times, probably friends with them now. How does it feel to have like come full circle to like meet your idols and become mates? Uh, how does it feel? I don't know. It's been a while. I've, I've known them for a little while now, so it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but it's always like... Uh, it's always a bit of a dream come true whenever you work with your heroes. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll never like, I'll never forget how I felt like when I first like got in contact with them, mm -hmm. and how I felt when they first started asking me for tunes and stuff. So, and when I got on lineups with them and everything. So it's uh, it's really quite magical. <laughs> quite surreal, I imagine. Quite surreal, yeah. Um, you've said that you may have synesthesia, which excuse my pronunciation if that's wrong, is where you see sounds and you feel senses in different ways yeah. especially sound like you might see a sound or have a color or give you a visual mm -hmm. um how has that either helped or hindered you as a producer and dj yeah so i don't know if it's like strictly synesthesia because i don't see it in front of me i see it like in my mind's eye so i know that if i have a strong imagery from a song that i'm working on i know that it's a good song um, particularly with sound design like if i'm making a sound and i get like a really strong image in my head i'm like oh that it sounds better to me. Like chariots. Yeah. Damn, how do you know that? <laughs> That's wild. Okay, I think I might have said that in an interview. He, he, he might have. <laughs> um, what was the... Uh, how has it, it helped you oh, or hindered you? Yeah, I guess, that's, I guess that's the main thing. Is like when I get a strong imagery, I know that it sounds, it sounds good to me. It's and like a full, full experience in my brain. <laughs> yeah, I bet it must be quite intense, especially when you're DJing. I imagine. Yeah, it can be quite intense. Although I don't get it all the time. I know that if I don't, if I'm not feeling a song and I don't get like mad strong imagery off it, then I know that it's not really, it's not, it hasn't got a spark. There's no like flavour there. So yeah, it's quite a blessing. That is quite a yeah. blessing. Now Bush Baby, he has changed his sound a couple of times over the years. Yeah. You started with like dirty bass line, then you moved on to a bit of techno, then tech house that to me feels like you've just got a fresh fade it's a nice feeling and now you're kind of on the speed garage yeah do you feel that being able to change genres help you maintain a sense of freedom in your work yeah that's a very nice way of putting it um, I think like garage has always been an influence for me like from the start and when I first started doing stuff under Bush Baby it was really quite fast like it was all 140 BPM speed garage tempo um, and then I sort of like over the years like came down yeah and did more house and techno stuff but even like Women's Touch that I released in 2019 I think it was so five years ago now um, that's a garage tune so like the influence has always been there but it's just coming out more now recently so um, yeah glad to hear it this new EP is really fire I must say uh, a lesser known Bush Baby era though is um, the old days of recording raps on Magic's Acid Door, uh, which I'd love to hear. Maybe you'll drop them one day, who knows? Uh, that really worried me then. I thought you were going to have like a clip of me rapping. I was going to say, and here's a clip, but I, I, I know, unfortunately. Um, um, yeah, no, Magic's Music Maker. Music was, Maker. Uh, so I started on MTV Music Generator, which is a PlayStation game. And then I started like making raps on. Um, Magic music. <laughs> We're so I'm cringing now thinking about it. Uh, yeah, damn. Is, it, is there I'm any other like? Having a clip of that. <laughs> I'm, I'm quite upset. I wish I did. Is there any other like non-dance music projects in the pipeline? Um, no, not in, like not at the moment. I've made like music under different aliases in the past, mm. but haven't. No, I haven't got anything out there at the moment. Maybe one day. Maybe we'll get that Bush Baby rap one day. <laughs> um, as part of my research, I actually remade one of your tracks, very simply remade it, but followed the YouTube tutorial for M1 Impulse. And um, I've seen that one. I must say mine was kind of whack. Um, <laughs> I've never really been able to make good drops. So what's the secret? Oh, the secret, the secret. There isn't a secret, I'm afraid. I guess heavy sub, getting the balance between your kick and your sub and your bass right. 
Um, and I think for me, it's not having stuff too busy. Like having a main focus of the song, it will always be like having a core idea that you can focus on and that like maybe evolves through the track is the best thing for a song, I think, to make it hit hard. Well, I must give props to you as well because we making that, I was like, it seems so simple. Like that tune does not, it's not, doesn't sound complicated, but like mine just didn't, obviously it wouldn't live up, but <laughs> oh yeah, big respect. Um, awesome. A big principle of your workflow, though, is to work fast and don't overthink stuff. Just get stuff down on the paper as soon as you can. Mm. Don't get caught up in the little things. Um, how have you incorporated elements of mise en place or everything in its place uh, into your workflow to enable this to happen? So I actually have to constantly battle that thing of like wanting to overthink everything. So that's like a big drain for me when I'm making music is that I, everything has to be perfect before I move on. So I have to constantly fight that and be like, no, I have to get the core idea down straight away. Um, and yeah, let the kind of like let the chips fall where they may. And then get to a point where it's good enough. Like you're not going to get it perfect. So getting it to a point where it's good enough is always the best shout. You can always come back and improve it if you need exactly. to. Now, a little birdie told me that Bush Baby here likes to indulge and sometimes even make ambient music. How important is it to have musical balance in your life? Um, I actually used to make a lot more ambient music than I, than I do now. I haven't made anything other than what I'm making at the moment in about a year, year and a half maybe. But I definitely think it's good to have a balance, especially with what I'm listening to as well. Like I listen to a lot of different stuff. Um, in fact, most of the time I don't listen to what I make, like the same genre. When I'm, unless I'm at the gym, I will. But if I'm just driving or whatever, it's always usually like bands or ambient stuff, or I listen to a lot of podcasts. So, yeah. I think that might surprise a lot of people because I think people must think, oh, DJs just listen to garage yeah. or house <laughs> or whatever. But it's yeah. not the case most of the time, is it? No, definitely not. Okay, last question, last question. You recently released uh, Cutty Dub 23. And when I was researching, I found Cutty Dub original a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really good. Um, in, uh, example of how your work has developed over time. Where do you see it going next? Where do I see my work going next? Yeah, your sound and style. I'm quite happy with where my sound is at the moment. Like, I'm keen to keep exploring this kind of garage, two-step speed garage. This whole like, it's very, it's very like UK. If that makes sense, there's a lot of like UK samples, rave samples, those classic like jungle pads, and I just love. I have always loved that, but I'm willing to, like, I'm keen to explore that way more in like the coming years. Go even deeper where you Go are even now. deeper, yeah. And like, I, I also just want to make tunes that I really like and that I will, that if I got sent, I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm playing that out. Uh, or I'm, I'm really feeling that, so, yeah. Well, you heard it here first, people. You heard it here first, not going anywhere. <laughs> right, anything you want to get off your chest and then we're all good. Um, I think I'm all good. I'm looking forward to the set tonight. Uh, that probably won't mean anything to anyone who's watching this because they might not know where we are. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to what's coming up in the year, years ahead and uh, keep it locked. Thank you. Thank you. Big ups. Big ups. Nice one.